This pilot is making decisions. She's looking at the weather forecast and the actual weather reports to help her decide if the conditions are suitable for the intended flight. She's looking at the charts to help her select the best route to her destination and to help decide on an alternate airport if the weather or other factors prevent her from reaching that destination. Being a pilot, private or professional, means making decisions. Many have been made already, and now the pilot has a plan for getting her aircraft to its eventual destination in complete safety. Those decisions will continue through every phase of the flight planning. By making the right decisions, we reduce the risk of an accident or incident. But we all know that even the best planning can fall apart when we run up against the unexpected. The unexpected can take many forms. Maybe the winds are different than forecast, or the weather at destination has suddenly gone below limits. Perhaps the aircraft, despite a thorough pre-flight check, is not performing as expected. All of these factors can spoil a well-prepared plan, and each requires a decision. One of the more recent buzz phrases in aviation is pilot decision-making, or PDM. The phrase may be new, but the principle has been with us since aviation's earliest days. There's a simple acronym to help you through the decision-making process, and it's called simply enough, decide. D, first detect any change. E, estimate the significance of the change. C, choose the outcome objectives. I, identify the outcome options. D, do the best option. And finally, E, evaluate the progress. Let's look at how this works in the real world. Janet recently qualified for her instrument rating, which allows her to fly in poor weather conditions. The Cessna 172 she is flying is also equipped for instrument flight, but it is not equipped for flight into known icing conditions. She is scheduled to depart Ottawa at 9.30 a.m. to arrive at her destination in Quebec City in time for a job interview with the owner of a small commuter airline. While checking the weather, Janet learned about a disturbance which is well northwest of Quebec City and is scheduled to bring with it snow, low ceilings, and reduced visibility for the early evening. But according to the forecast, there is enough time for her to get there and get back before the bad weather arrives. Icing is also forecast, and this will affect the airplane's ability to fly in cloud. To complicate matters, her takeoff was delayed because of problems in getting fuel on time. Janet has resolved to make up the delay by increasing her cruise speed. About one hour into the flight, a change is detected. Janet notices that the weather is worse than forecast. The ceiling is lower, with broken clouds at about 1,500 feet, and the visibility is definitely worse than anticipated. However, in estimating the significance of this change, Janet knows that both she and her aircraft can handle the conditions, and the best option is to carry on. She is aware that the front may be moving in faster than forecast, and she will have to continue to reevaluate her decision as the flight continues. However, as long as the weather doesn't worsen, with the increased cruise speed, Janet will make her appointment on time. Just beyond Montreal, a ground speed check indicates that the winds must be increasing because Janet's cruising speed has reduced to under 100 knots. Janet then gets an update on the weather and learns that Quebec City is down to a thousand foot ceiling with a visibility of two and a half miles in snow showers. The system has intensified and she will have to fly in instruments to continue to her destination. To do this, Janet will have to climb to a higher altitude, causing her to fly in clouds and perhaps into icing conditions. Just east of Montreal, the ceilings are now down to 1,500 feet with visibility reduced to three to five miles in snow showers. She will now have to fly IFR to continue. However, due to her increased cruise RPM, her available fuel will just cover what is needed to arrive with IFR reserves at her destination, with Montreal as the alternate. Janet's best option, the one she took, was to land at Montreal and rent a car to continue on to her appointment. She detected the changes, estimated their significance, chose outcomes, identified options, decided on the best option, and continued her evaluation in case she had to decide again. The decision she made was the correct one. If she had continued to Quebec City, she would have encountered the front, which had arrived earlier than forecast. It was a situation that possibly neither she nor her aircraft would have been equipped to handle. As it was, she got to the appointment. A little late, but she got there. And oh, by the way, she got the job. What this all means is making decisions is not always easy. But whatever decision we make should be the one that offers the best and safest alternative. I'm Mike Dwaron, inviting you to return next week to fly with us through the overcast.